Hello fellow crafters and welcome back to Max DM Crafting. Today a little progress on the merchant's house. Stay a while and listen. This is a project that I started in the fall of 2020 guys and uh, now we are in the very beginning of this uh, 2021 and uh, yeah this project uh, actually was a little bit modified because uh, during the very beginning of this project I broke my proxon and uh, so I had to modify a little bit the project when, uh, when I was thinking that uh, everything was actually lost my patrons come in my help and uh, yeah now I have a new proxon and I can continue the project uh, this house uh, it's uh, quite interesting because I'm applying my techniques new techniques old techniques and everything is uh, yeah at the top level of my crafting skills so watching this video you can learn a lot as I'm learning during this you know crafting process I have a lot of cool stuff guys to show you during this year so I have a long schedule of projects that I'm uh, actually preparing for you. You already seen uh, the you know sci-fi part, and uh, now I'm actually finishing my new uh, town setting. So one of the next video will be for sure a new setting for a new town. Uh, I'm uh, creating a beautiful encounter. Uh, my party will uh, go will travel through time, so future and past, through portals and stuff like that. So I need uh, quite a lot of cool stuff. So yeah, stick around, okay? Don't, uh, don't miss anything. But now let's uh, keep going on the merchant's house. Crack on. Before my dear patrons bought me back the proxen, we were left at this point. The third level, at the beginning, was simply meant to act as a support for the roof. But as soon as I completed its construction, I realized it would be very useful to have another playable level in my hands. So I decided to camouflage the cardboard with foam and to make everything as homogeneous as possible. I still don't know what I'm going to do with this base, but first I want to take note of the level 2 profile, so that I can have references in the next steps. As I said in the first episode, for reasons of time and practicality, I prefer to prepare wooden beams and planks in advance and not interrupt the creative flow. Now I'm going to create the wooden floor, but first I cut out the hole for access with the stairs, which I will create later in the second level.
For the floor, I use the same technique that I used in the second episode of this series. However, I proceed dry, without glue. This allows me to be quick and clean, to better correct any inaccuracies. Once the entire floor is covered, I use a diluted PVA glue and I pass it all. In this way, I get a protective layer and fix it all those pieces in place in a few seconds. For the walls inside, I remain faithful to the lower floors. I use the surface layer of the foam panels, which can be easily cut thanks to the proxon. If you don't have a proxon, you can take a look at my tutorial number 4 to get thin slices even with a simple hot wire arch cutter. Our hobby allows us to endlessly recycle materials. Here you see how I use the scraps, cutting foam strips to the exact height of my walls. Instead of cutting out short pieces, I use partial cuts to fold my strips and proceed faster. The pieces thus cut are more stable and allow quick and precise processing. I then use the beams in the corners to give the idea of support, while I cover any joints in the stucco with the boards, trying to give a general organic look and therefore beautiful to see. For the external walls I prefabricated these strips of wooden planks. This level will feature external wooden walls with the typical reinforcement of half timbered houses. Creating these strips is very easy. I first pass with my cutter trying to be constant in sides of the boards. However, a certain small difference between one axis and the other creates a more realistic final effect and greater dynamism of the piece. Once I have gone over the dividing lines with a ballpoint pen, I add some details to the wood, such as knots, deeper veins and irregular ends of uh, some boards. At this point, just few steps with the wire brush and we get a strip ready for use, quick and easy to apply outside the structure. Once applied, just cut out the excess boards and that's it. My favorite part is that of the wooden reinforcement. Here, depending on the commitment and time we dedicate to it, we can really achieve exceptional results. This level will have a mixture of diagonal, vertical, crisscross and horizontal beams. Only advice, for each of the facades of your building, always try to maintain a certain symmetry of the reinforcement. The more you deviate from symmetry, the more chaotic and not organic the building could be. This can sometimes be used to our advantage in building shacks or uh, barracks.
finish it with the addition of small beams for a better aesthetic effect. This level was born by chance, but uh, as you can see here, it can also lend itself well to individual use. This large room can easily become a tavern in turn, or any environment within a village or dungeon. In our merchant house, however, it is the prelude to a spectacular roof, which I will show you in the next episode. Ok guys, this is it for today. If you like this video, smash the like button and don't forget to subscribe. Share this channel with your friends and remember, I'm here for showing a lot of cool stuff, so see you around, ok? Till next time, happy crafting!